Our topic for the three minute thesis is comparing children identified with autism in medical versus school settings. And this is a line of research that I've actually developed over the past couple of years and I think is really interesting and relevant to some things going on right here in Oregon. So the background for this is that there are discrepancies across these systems and how to identify autism. Um, and just because a child is identified in one system, so the medical system, for example, doesn't mean that the, the schools, that they'll receive a special education. And just because they're identified for special education doesn't mean that they'll get a medical diagnosis. So there's these two different systems operating. And the medical system is diagnosing kids with autism using a manual of disorders that has specific criteria on what a child must meet. Whereas the educational system is based on federal special education laws and is merely identifying kids as needing special education under one of um, several categories or eligibilities of which autism is one. And so under this broader federal definition of autism, states are actually able to modify, change their criteria based on, on how they want to identify or define autism. Um, and so we had a sample of children identified some as having a medical diagnosis of autism and some simply a special education eligibility. And so we wanted to look at differences between these groups. So we found that parents were rating behaviors similarly across the groups. So we looked at um, adaptive behavior, so things like daily living skills, communication, things needed for everyday life, as well as um, difficult, challenging behaviors. And parents were rating quite similarly across the groups. However, we also had cl clinicians, grad advanced graduate students, rate these children. Um, and they were blind to the diagnosis where the child was uh, identified. And the, the clinicians were actually seeing much more uh, symptom severity, greater symptomatology for those identified with autism um, as having a medical diagnosis as opposed to just that school special education eligibility. And so we thought this had a lot of really interesting implications for who's being identified, what services these children might be getting in the different set systems, and, and, and thus long-term outcomes based on these different services, based on access to special education, things like that. Whether we really are going to have two unique subgroups of kids with autism is a really interesting future direction based on these two subcategories. And then also right here in Oregon last year, the state decided to overhaul criteria for identifying autism in the schools to match directly onto that medical system criteria right out of the medical system manual. Um, and so we decided to send out a survey right um, as these changes were going into place, and then a year later asking practitioners if the changes to the criteria were gonna impact their practice and whether they thought it would result in different kids being identified or even different ways that they're looking at autism. And so that survey um, has now been sent out twice and we're beginning to analyze the data. So there'll be some really interesting future directions to look at whether changes to map the criteria onto each other really impact practice.